Hi, whoever's watching this online, sorry, I forgot to hit record. If you want to get the front page of the quiz, cheat off a friend, mark it yourself. Number eight. That's okay, this is the really important question. This is a tough question. This is the holy schmoly question anyways. I looked at this and I went, huh? Well, no, no. I said, I'm going to be stubborn and clever and, and I, I, I got to try something. I reasoned my way to this. Nicole, I said, there's a seven, a seven, a nine, and a three. I said, I think these two go together. And I said, there's a two, a two, a nine, a three. I said, I think these two go together. I said, I'm going to pick up this first log. And I'm going to try and turn it into that, which definitely means I'm pulling up my base change law. I want to rewrite it as base three. I don't want to change the seven. I'm good with the seven. So if I rewrite it as base three, I'll get this. The log base three of seven over the log base three of nine. That's the base change law. I said, uh, oh, what is the log base 3 of 9? <clears throat> That's kind of nice. Oh, according to this question, what is the log base 3 of 7? What can I replace it with? I said, you know what? This guy is actually x over 2. I'll come back to that. I picked up this guy. I wrote it down. I said, I, you know what, I'm good with the 2, but instead of a 3, what would I like sitting inside the log instead? What would I prefer sitting there instead of a 3? But it is a 3. How can I write a 3 as a 9? Ah, I said. Is 9 to the 1 half still 3? But what can I do with uh, one half square root, right? What can I do with that one half exponent? What can I do with that one half exponent? Darn right, I can move it to the front. Absolutely. I'll get this a one half in front, and then a log base two of nine, which is one half. Oh. According to this question, what can I replace the log base 2 of 9 with? Because I asked you to. What can I replace the log? You know what? It's been 15 years, and I still am not tired of that joke. I won't get tired of it all year long. Yeah. Why? Uh, in fact, I think this is the same as a half y. So this plus this is the same as... Or you could write it as, because timesing by a half is the same as dividing by 2, and that looks a little prettier. Or, since they're both over 2 and I have a common denominator, Ryan, you could also have written it like this, because it turns out there's a common denominator, so I can combine the fractions. I would give you probably, almost certainly, one mark for the getting the x term and one mark for getting the y term. And there's your two marks. That's a tricky one. Although it won't be in, in a few days. Okay. Just curious, how many got that? Only a couple. Okay. Number nine says write as a single logarithm. What's my base in number nine? What's the base in number nine? Ten. I had some students in my last class, they said they thought it was A. I said, well, first of all, if it was an A, the A would be really small next to the G, but also it would be two log base A of... Uh, there's got to be something in the log. The A's got to be inside the log. Uh, first thing I did was I moved this up to there, and I moved this dunk onto there, and I said, this is really the log of a squared plus the log of a to the fifth cubed. Screen froze? I don't know what's going on today. It's working good.
Okay, just picked it up again. Should be a beep right about now. Then there should be about 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3. We're back. Thank you. Um, I, the exponent would go on the 8 of the 5th. By the way, it's not going to end up being an 8 of the 8th. What's it going to end up being? Yeah, this is really the log of a squared plus the log of a to the 15th, which is the log of a squared times a to the 15th. This whole thing simplifies to the log of a to the 17th power. Or you could move the 17 to the front. In fact, there's another way to get this same answer. You could have done this, or you could have gone 2 log a plus 15 log a. You could have moved the 5 to the front. How's that help, Mr. Duke? Well, what's 2x plus 15x? 17x? What's 2 log a plus 15 log a? Pretty sure it's... 17 log a. So there's two ways to get there. Both are valid. Both are fine. Number 10. Graph this. We said our strategy is going to be figure out what it's based on, write the key points, and then do the transformations. So I said to myself, self, this is based on y equals 1 half to the x. Blew, actually, I said this, Steph. I said I'm going to graph the points for 2 to the x. Negative uh, 1, 1.5, 0, 1, 1, 2, 2, 4, 3, 8, asymptote y equals 0. Now, that would be the graph for this. I want the graph for that. I guess that would make this positive, this negative, this negative, this negative, and oh, that would so why it stays the same. This graph is based on those points, Kitty. Now, I'm going to do the transformations. Plus two, two left. Minus four, four down. Two left, instead of positive one, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. Oop, that's a Y, so that doesn't move at all. Four down, negative 3.5, negative three, negative two, zero, four. Oop, four down, negative four. This graph is going to have an asymptote at negative 4. This graph is going to go through negative 1, 3 point, negative 3.5, negative 2, negative 3, negative 3, negative 2, negative 4, 0, negative 5, uno, so three, four. Kirsten, this graph is going to look like that. How would I give marks out? I would give one mark out for the asymptote. I would give one mark out if you had a shape like that, if you clued in it was an exponential graph. And then you get two marks for the points. Now I said at least three. You didn't have to do all five like I did. But if you did at least three, take a half mark off for any point that's incorrect in the wrong place out of two. That's how I would mark this one. Does that make sense? And if you could give yourself a score out of count them 18. Yo. So, there's quiz four. We looked last day at identities. I think the homework was around page 153, 154, sorry. And what I said to you was, I'm not going to ask you or give you an identity question on your test, but this is great practice of log rules. 
and you will have trig identities later on. We also looked at if-then questions last class. So I'm going to start up by saying, hey, any questions you would like me to go over? Now is your chance to ask. Can. A or B or both. When I circle 5 and there's an A and B, that probably means both. Anyways, I, maybe both. I'll probably let you try 5B on your own. We'll see. Okay. Any others besides 5? Yeah. Okay. Any others? So usually I found kids get 3. Uh, for number 3, probably what I would have done is rewritten this as x to the negative 1 and then moved the exponent to the front and you're done. There's, there's other ways to get there. Roxanne, first thing I would do is this. There's my t-table. That's my quick, easy way to do a t-table. Which, which side, Roxanne, am I going to work on? I think it's pretty obvious. Which is the uglier side? Absolutely. By the way, look at the right side. Now it says log base c of c. What is the log base c of c? So I'm going to leave it as log base c of c, but I'm going to keep in mind maybe what will happen on the left side is instead of getting log base c of c, maybe I'll reach the point where I get fractions where everything cancels, which is also a 1. Does that make sense? What's my base on the left-hand side? There's two of them. What are my bases on the left-hand side? I'm going to go base change, and I'm going to try writing it as base C, because that's what the right-hand side looks like. So if I rewrote this as base C, it would be the log base C of B over the log base C of A. That was what the first log would look like as base C. Is that okay so far, Roxanne? And I would go, uh, the second one is going to be the log base C of A over the log base C of B. Is that okay as well? Does anyone yet see that we're done? Because you know what I have here? Don't I have the same thing here and here, same thing here and here? Same thing here and here, same, same thing here and here? How many x's on top? One. How many x's on the bottom? One. How many left and where? I'm going to argue that I think that cancels. Yes? And that cancels. When you have a fraction and everything cancels, what does that simplify to? Not zero. What does it simplify to? Ah. And you know what? I'm going to go over here and I'll rewrite that as a 1. Does the left-hand side equal the right-hand side? Well, then, number 5. Number 5. 5a. There is a less clever and an uber clever way to do number 5a. The less clever would be to say, well, I'll write the left side as base b. Or I'll write the right side as base a. Andrew, that would be the less clever way. You want to do it the uber clever way, don't you? I can tell. So I'm going to do this. Stay on this page, Andrew. Stay on this page. But I really want you to look closely at this. Stay on this page. Stay on this page. Do you agree with me that our strategy should be some type of a base change? Okay. I'm going to go zipping off to when we did the base change law. The base change law looked like this. When you had the same base, top and bottom, you could take these and write them like that. Now, I don't know if you just saw it. I saw your body language change. Maybe you did get your nerdly adrenaline rush. Let's see. I'm going to argue here, Andrew, that I can rewrite this here as the log base Q of P. Because if I gave you that and said write it as base A, that's what you would do. We're reversing the base change. 
I'm going to argue that on this side, I could write this as the log base Q of P. Because if I gave you this and said write it as base B, that's what you would get. And, oh, I do have left side equals right side. That's the uber clever way to realize I can reverse the base change to its simplest form. And although I could do it the long way, I'm going to say I'd do it that way. So I'll let you try 5B on your own. Now, I said to you, I said to you, Kirsten, that identities would not be on the test, and they will not be T-table identities. Uh, something like numbers 8 and 9 are going to be on your test. I'm going to give you some log expressions to simplify. Okay. To me, that's not an identity. That's just practicing your log rules. So make sure you're good on 8 and 9. They are completely fair game. We're going to jump. We're going to skip a bunch of lessons. We're going to jump all the way over to page 213. Page 213. What we just did, Jessica, is we skipped a little four-lesson mini-unit. I always do that at the end of the year. It's called Series and Sequences. I do it at the end of the year because that's my snow day hedge bet. Although it's four lessons, and if I have four days, I'll take four days, I can cram it into two if I need to. In fact, I could do it in one god-awful, brutal one lesson if I really needed to. Now, that was when we had the mandatory provincial. This year, that's my, and if I have to skip one little tiny unit and cross off a couple of questions on the final exam, that'll be the one, although it's nerdily cool, that'll be the one. What we're looking at for the next three or four days actually is some applications of exponential and logarithmic functions. It wasn't a coincidence that I began class with that little snow graph. What we're looking at today are what are called logarithmic scales, and the first application of logarithmic scales is in earthquakes, Richter scale. This is how Richter scale works. The Richter scale is named after the American seismologist Charles Richter, and it's used to measure the magnitude of an earthquake. In fact, the magnitude of an earthquake is the measure of how much energy was released. They get it from the logarithm of the amplitude of waves recorded by seismographs. You don't need to know that. All you need to know is how Richter scale works. By the way, the 2011 Japan earthquake was a 9.0 on the Richter scale. Here's how Richter scale works. Look up. If earth look up means look up. If earthquake A has a Richter scale of 4 and earthquake B has a Richter scale of 2. Earthquake A is not twice as strong. What's 4 take away 2? What's 4 take away 2? It's 10 squared 100 times as strong. Richter scale is a 10-fold scale. If you have earthquake A that's 5 on the Richter scale and earthquake B is 2 on the Richter scale, what's 5 take away 2? 10 to the third 1,000 times as strong. Okay. What if you have an earthquake of Richter scale like in Japan, 9, and oh, about 12 years ago, remember that little mini earthquake that we had here, which was a 3, 9 take away 3 is 6, 10 to the 6. The earthquake in Japan was a million times as strong, which means a million times more damage, which is why it did so much damage. It's why on the news when you hear, oh, an earthquake of Richter scale 7 and you compare it to an earthquake of Richter scale 6, you might be saying, well, the difference between a 7 and a 6 isn't that much. Why is there so much more damage? No, no, no. 7 take away 6 is 1, 10 to the 1, 10 times more damage. This is how Richter scale works. So example one says, an earthquake of magnitude 8 is how many times as intense as an earthquake of magnitude 7? 10 to the 1. I normally don't write the 1. I will this time so you can see where the exponent came from. An earthquake of magnitude 7 is how many times as intense as an earthquake of magnitude 3? 10 to the 4th, 10,000 times stronger. I don't like the way C is worded. An earthquake of magnitude 4 is how many times as intense as an earthquake of magnitude 6? Now it is going to be 10 to the negative 2. 
10 to the negative 2 or 1 one hundredth, except I don't think that's as intense. I think that's weaker. I, I wish they would say is how many times weaker. 1 one hundredth, but whatever. A 4.8 compared to a 6.8 is also a 10 to the negative 2 if we're looking at the 4.8 as our reference point. 1 one hundredth times as strong. E. The 1976 earthquake in Italy was how many times as intense as the 1960? Okay. Italy. 76 in Italy was uh, 6.5. Colombia, 5.5. 10 to the 1. Or 10. 1933 earthquake in Japan. How many times as intense as the 1966 earthquake in Turkey? 33 Japan, 8.9. Turkey, 6.9. 10 squared, 100 times stronger. Turn the page. They're deriving how you can compare earthquakes. I really think they overcomplicate how to get there. Here is Mr. Duke's simplified version. This is what we're going to put in a little box right here. 10 to the first earthquake minus the second earthquake equals how many times stronger or weaker. 10 to the first one they give you minus the second one they give you. 10 to the first minus second. Example 2 says this. How many times more intense was the 1985 Mexico earthquake? That's the first one. Than the 1966 Turkey earthquake? That's the second one. 10 to the power of the first one minus the second one equals how many times is intense? 10, uh, what is 8.1 take away 6.9? You have to do the exponent first, like bad math, right? Uh, 8.1 take away 6.9. 8.1 take away 8 is, sorry, take away 6 is 2.1 take away 1.2? No? Yes? No? You need your calculators out, boys and girls. What is 8.1 take away 6.9? Is it 1.2? No answer. Okay, I'll wait. Just means more homework for you guys. Is it 1.2? Yes? Okay. Uh, what is 10 to the 1.2? going to be a decimal. What'd you get? 10 to the power of 1.2. 10 to the power of 1.2. It well, 1.2, not 2.2, 1.2 is, oh, 15, oh, wait a minute. What's it say? Answer to the what? Okay, 16. 16 times stronger. <coughs> <coughs> Roughly 16 times more damage. Why do I say roughly? It also depends on the construction. The one in the Dominican Republic in Haiti at Port-au-Prince a couple of years ago wasn't that big, but the construction there was so flimsy that it really damaged everything as well. The one in Japan was not only... Because Japan builds everything earthquake-proof. They take it seriously. But the one last year was so huge, it still did damage. We're really more interested in example three. Example three says, a major earthquake of 7.5 is 375 times as intense as a minor earthquake. Find the magnitude of the minor earthquake. 10 to the first minus second equals how many times? How many times stronger does it say this, two earth, this first earthquake was than the second earthquake? 375? What was the magnitude of the first earthquake, the bigger one? 
7.5 minus, what was the magnitude of the minor one? We don't know. X. Cassandra, where is the X sitting? Exponent. You know what I'm going to have to do to both sides? Take the log. This is why we do it in this unit. Now we can actually solve this. We're going to take the log of both sides. We're going to get the log of 10 to the 7.5 minus x equals the log of 375. Holy, what can I do with the exponent now? And since it's a binomial exponent, when I move it to the front, what will I remember? Brackets, yes, yes, yes. You would have remembered the brackets, right, Holly? Nod. Oh, and Holly, what's my base when I don't write a base? Are you saying this is the log base 10 of 10? What is the log base 10 of 10? This is 1 times the bracket, which really means, for all intents and purposes, that log base 10 of 10 vanishes. My next line really looks like this. 7.5 minus x equals the log of 375. Let's get the x by itself. Nicole, I think the easiest way to get the x by itself is going to be move the x to that side by plusing it and minus this to that side by minusing it. I think the easiest way to get the x by itself is going to be x equals 7.5 take away the log of 375. What is the Richter scale measurement of this smaller earthquake? It's going to be 4 point something or 5 point something, I think, if my math is correct. 4.9? Yes? No? Yes? Yeah. 4.9 on the Richter scale. Uh, just to give you a bit more perspective, um, a train going by, a big freight train, when you can feel it if you're waiting in the car about three or four cars away, you can feel it through the ground a little bit. That's a Richter scale of about 0.8. Semi-truck driving by is a Richter scale of about 0.3. Okay. The Japan earthquake last year was stunningly big. If you're a nerd at all, every so often Nova on PBS has been doing specials on the Japan earthquake, looking at some of the numbers. There was a seaside town that had built a 30-foot high, 30-foot high seawall because they had done the arithmetic, and even if there was an earthquake of magnitude 9, the biggest tsunami you would get was 25 feet high, so they built a five-foot safety margin. They still got flooded. The wave went over the wall, and the engineers were going, wait a minute, we've done the math time and time again. The wave should not have been 30 feet high. It should have been 25 feet high. Turns out the earthquake was so strong, their town sank by 15 feet. The whole coastline dropped by 15 feet, and there went their safety margin. They hadn't thought of the whole island sinking. Again, I mean, really? That was that strong. Go watch some of the specials on the Japan earthquake on Discovery Channel or PBS or whatever. It'll knock your socks off how strong that earthquake was. We sit on an earthquake fault, too. Almost every one of our high schools is not up to earthquake code. This one is not. I think in 2000, the government estimated it would take about $10 billion to get all of the high schools up to code. And they said, we're going to do it. They, I believe last I checked, have done two schools out of the whole province because they don't have $10 billion. And they don't want to spend the money because they could spend it on the schools, but they wouldn't be able to give everybody all the free stuff. They'd lose the next election for sure. right? Of course, the obvious answer is if there is an earthquake and all the schools come down, won't that cost far more than $10 billion to rebuild all the schools? I wish the government would think that way. But no government, NDP or liberal or whoever, no government will think about spending money 15 years from now to save an issue 15 years from now. They don't work that way. Three words, duck and cover. 
There's a reason we do the earthquake drills, right? Turn the page. So Richter scale, Katie, is 10 to the first minus second equals how many times stronger? Katie, what is it? 10 to the what? First minus second equals how many times stronger? Katie, what is it? 10 to the what? How many times stronger? Cassandra, what is it? 10 to the... First minus second, I need you all with me, is how many times stronger. I, I'm doing this for a reason, for an important reason. Shannon, what is Richter scale? 10 to the power of? First, mi really guys? First minus second equals how many times stronger? All of us, all together, 10 to the power of what? Equals? One more time, all of us, 10 to the power of the? Minus the? Second equals? Because I'd like you to skip loudness of sound, and I'd like you to turn, please, to page 217, pH. pH. Who's in Camp 12? I think you'll look at this in more detail. This is Mr. Duick's down and dirty simplified, hey, here's how uh, pH scale works. So it says this, pH scale. In 1909, Soren Sorensen, if he had a kid, would he be Soren Sorensen son? Get a boy? Okay, maybe. Anyways, a Dutch chemist introduced the term pH, representing the expression the power of hydrogen, to measure the extreme wide range of hydrogen ion concentration in substances. I have no idea what that sentence means. I don't care. The pH scale measures the range of hydrogen ion concentration by determining the acidity or the alkalinity of a solution. I have no idea what that means. I know acid means don't put it in your eye. I've seen enough movies to, okay, acid bad. Alkaline, I think, has something to do with the word base or something. I, I don't, I took Chem 11. I don't care right now. I can read a chart. It says the, scales me, the scale measures from 0 to 14, with 7 representing, with values below 7 representing increasing acidity and values above 7 representing increasing alkalinity. Say what? Look at the chart. I think if you're to the right, sorry, to the left, you're acid. If you're to the right, you're alkaline. And it's just like Richter scale. Every difference of 1 is actually 10 to the power. In fact, one might say that pH is 10 to the power of first minus second equals how many times more acid or alkaline, which is why I had you repeat that little chant. Show you what I mean. Example 8. It says, complete the value using the approximate pH values given. Tomato juice is how many times as acid as pure water? What's tomato juice? 4. What's pure water? 7. 10 to the third, and it's acid because... 4 is to the left of 7, and it says acid is that direction. Tomato juice is a 1,000 times more acid than pure water. Eggs are how many times as alkaline as pure water? Well, what's the pH of eggs? 8. What's the pH of pure water? 7. What's 8 take away? What's first minus second? 10. To the one. Why is it alkaline? Well, look up. Uh, eight to the oh to the right is increasing alkaline. Milk of magnesia is how many times as what as blood? Milk of magnesia, ten point five. Human blood, seven point five. What's ten point five? Take away seven point five. Ten to the third. Here's blood, here's milk of magnesia, it's to the right, so what word am I going to use? Acid or alkaline? Alkaline. See, I don't know anything about pH, but I can read a chart. Alkaline. What's a hundred times as acidic as normal rain? Normal rain, now acidic means to the head to the left. 100 means 10 to what power, actually? Uh, 100 times more acidic, vinegar. Hundred times more alkaline, P. 
pure water than normal rain. If they'd wanted me to go in that direction. The only one I don't like the wording of is E. E says, eggs are how many times as alkaline as washing soda? See, washing soda is a 12. Eggs are an 8. But they want me to go in the alkaline direction. They're saying, how many times more alkaline is this than this? But this is to the left of it. It's going to be 10 to the negative 4. It's less alkaline. It's 1 ten thousandth as alkaline. Yes? Hustle back. Okay. So, turn the page. We're going to use 10 to the power of first minus second equals... How many times more alkaline or acid, depending on which way you're moving on the chart? And if I give you a pH question, Cassandra, I'll give you that uh, little chart with the arrows. I'll paste that into the, diet, the, the question. Okay. Example 9, pure water has a pH of 7. Swimming pool water has a pH of 7.5. Seawater has a pH of 8.5. How many times is alkaline is seawater than pure water? Seawater is 8.4. Pure water is 7. Is seawater to the right? Is it alkaline? Why, yes, it is. It's going to be 10 to the power of 8.4 minus 7. It's going to be 10 to the power of, I can go 8.4 minus 7 in my head. It's 10 to the 1.4. I have no idea what that is. Someone crunch that, please. It's going to be bigger than 10 and smaller than 100 because 10 squared is 100 and 10 to the 1 is 10. 25? So seawater is 25 times more alkaline than pure distilled water. By the way, I think pH scale is done silly. Why is 7 neutral? I would have made 0 neutral. Acid can be negative. Alkaline can be positive. But that's because a math person never made up the scale. Uh, how many times is alkaline as swimming pool is seawater? So seawater is 8.4. Swimming pool water, 7.5. 10 to the 8.4 minus 7.5. 10 to the 0.9. Ten to the one is ten, so ten to the point nine. I'm gonna guess seven or eight point something. What do you get? Seven point nine. So seawater is seven point nine times more alkaline as swimming pool water. It's to the right, so it's alkaline. Blah blah. We're not gonna get into it this in this kind of detail. You can cross out those ones. So Richter scale was 10 to the first minus second equals how many times stronger. pH was 10 to the first minus second equals how many times eh, more acid or alkaline. Look at the stupid chart and figure it out. Can you turn back, please, to page 213, sorry, 15, loudness of sound. Loudness of sound, the decibel scale. The loudness of sound was originally measured in bells, named after a Canadian named Alexander Graham Bell. You may have heard of him. He invented the telephone. Um, the problem is a bell is very, very big. We don't use that as our standard measurement. We use decibels as our standard measurement of sound. So a jet engine is about 140, 150 decibels. That would damage your hearing. In fact, the threshold of pain is right around 125 decibels. A whisper is around 30 decibels. You know how we compare sounds here? It's almost identical. It's going to be 10 to the power of first minus second equals how many times stronger? That would be correct, Stephanie, if we measured sound in bells. But we don't measure sound in bells. We measure them in decibels. The prefix deci 
what the number does that mean? You have to divide the exponent by 10. It's 10 to the first minus second divided by 10 equals how many times? And you know how I remember? Deci bells. That's my trigger phrase. Like decade is 10 years. Decimal is, you know, powers of 10. So a power saw is how many times as long, loud as a telephone dial? It's not 40. 10 to the fourth, not 10 to the 40th. A jet engine, 145 decibels, is how many times as loud as a threshold of pain? 145, take away 125 is 20, but it's not 10 to the 20th, it's 10 to the 2. Again, I don't like the way C is worded. A whisper is how many times as loud as a conversation? Well, 30 take away 60 is negative 30. It's 10 to the negative 3. It's 1 1,000th as loud. Turn the page. Blah, 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 blah. Here's your equation. 10 to the bigger, to the first one minus the second one divided by 2 equals, and this is their abbreviation for how many times is strong. Skip example five. Example six. How many times more intense is the sound of piano playing than a whisper? Well, 10 to the 67 minus 22, but you've got to divide that by 10. That's how many times stronger. Sixty-seven take away twenty-two equals divided by ten. It's going to be ten to the power of four point five. Thirty-one thousand six hundred twenty-three times as strong. A piano is thirty-one thousand six hundred twenty-three times as loud as somebody whispering. Example seven. Two phones in a home ring at the same time, and each ringer has a loudness of 80 decibels, 80 dB. Does that mean the total loudness is 160 decibels? Why or why not? Convince me. I saw Kirsten shaking her head. She's correct. Why? Can you turn back a page, Kirsten? What was the threshold of pain? Hundred twenty five. When two phones ring in your house, do you drop to the ground screaming, covering your ears, hoping your fillings don't shatter because they're hundred and sixty decibels louder than a jet engine? So I know the answer is not hundred and sixty decibels. I know that I don't think you go eighty plus eighty. The real question is then, how do you add decibel values? Hmm. This is the question in your homework I'm gonna give you to see if you can figure it out or I'll talk about it next class. Speaking of homework, page 219, number one, number two, four, five, six, seven is good, skip eight, skip nine, skip ten. 11 is the question where it's going to ask you to see if you have two jets flying together at 120 decibels each, what are they combined? I'll see if you can figure it out. If not, I'll talk about it next class. Number 12 in your take-home quiz. Now listen closely. Listen very closely. I'm going to give you an important hint. On your test, there's going to be one or two application questions. I'm either going to ask you Richter scale, decibels, or pH. On your test, I'm either going to ask you pH, decibels, or Richter scale. If you're paying attention right now, you may have picked up a hint about what I might ask on a test. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to ask you pH, Richter scale, or decibels. Take home quiz and you have homework.